starting with a shade coat of USA Olive Drab. We want to leave the dark undercoat in the deepest recesses, otherwise you don't have to be too careful at this point here. You're going to be creating a, a bit of a softer transition between the darkest undercoat and the, uh, the midcoat. And the midcoat you can see going on in this case it is German Field Grey 2 from the Panzer Aces line. So here I am being careful to leave the shade coat and the darker undercoat and I'm following the shape of the figure as you can see. Following the, the, the folds in uniform and as much as possible trying to create shape. You can create shape where it doesn't exist in flatter areas using this technique but in most cases you can just do what I'm doing here and fill it in. You don't have to fill in every single area in one go. Another coat is often the best approach. And then the highlight is Panzer Aces again, Africa Corps Tank Crew. And where possible I want to place a highlight uh, as close to the, dark, the darkest area as I can or uh, above the darkest area. You can see I'm trying to you imagine the highlight sitting above the the fold and then the, the shade is in the fold. Sometimes though the highlight would be under the fold. Um, if it's a deep fold uh, then you're really going to aim for the highest point. But you can see what I'm doing. It's a really simple process but it's really given the, um, the, the clothing a nice three-dimensional feel. Now I've, I've done an, an undercoat of track primer on the bag because I'm using a lighter main coat, which is, um, that's Panzerisi's track primer. The main coat is green grey, and the highlight colour for green grey is Panzerisi's Splinter Camouflage Base. And then I'm just picking out edges, once again, to give it a bit of, a um, bit of shape, help make those details pop. And then there's a few other details, you've got the water bottle, if I can keep it in short, sorry about that folks, but that's just the... Uh, flat earth and then some brown um, that's going to be German camo medium brown with a highlight colour of orange orange brown excuse me dropping something there folks and that's a very bright highlight so you've got to be careful with it but once again I'll make it really pop and give it a leathery kind of edge to it you see it on the holster as well And then I'm picking out some details in black. I've got the straps for the flame floor. I've got um, Waffen Farb. There's the uh, insignia on the collar. I'm going to do all these black areas apart from the boots at the same time. I'm going to leave the boots till later because they're going to get knocked about when I'm handling the figure. Now I'm using black here. Even areas that might get painted grey, I'm still going with black and not leaving it with the brown because it just looks weird, uh, the brown being a shade for grey, even if it is a darker brown than the shade of grey, it just doesn't look right. So I have to apply uh, an undercoat of black, wherever I'm going to go grey or go for a metallic look. And if I can just keep it in shot, it'll be even better, folks, sorry about that. Now, for the strap, I am using Panzer Aces Highlight German Black. It's a nice dark uh, brown. It'll look, it will look different from the webbing. You know, the brown for the webbing. And I'm also going to use it as a highlight for the gloves. It might seem a bit strange, but uh, it works really well. It helps it. Um, show a bit of detail without it being overly bright, as a, a, a grey might do. And it's just a nice simple picking out the lines again, bearing in mind the, sh the shape of the fabric, the shape of the fingers, and following what you can see. And I'm highlighting those straps with US Field Drab.
putting a couple of lines on. I'm also doing the water bottle at the same time there. And then some German grey. That's model colour German grey. That's going to be the base colour, or rather the shade colour, for the helmet and for the metallic uh, components and also this hose on the flamer itself. I'm just being careful to leave some black next to the gloves, next to the nozzle there as well for that little bit of shape. And one or two coats may be required. Remember all times folks. And then the main colour is going to be just model colour dark grey. Once again leaving a bit of the shade colour, the, the German grey, leaving a bit of that behind. You can see when I'm painting the helmet I'm deliberately leaving, in some bits leaving little lines, little lines of dark grey just to help create a circular finish to the, the helmet. To help create the shape in our eye when we put the highlight on and I'm also trying to create a little bit of a tubular shape on the flamer barrel not just painting it solid and um, grey and then for a highlight we've got London grey I find London grey is a good complement to the um, the dark grey it's not too bright just going around the edge there the helmet painting a few lines on the uh, the main body of the helmet, so to speak. A few lines on that hose, just on the, the top side where it'll be catching the light, and then a few more lines on the barrel, just to try and accentuate that tubular look. And then there's a lot to be done here, folks. Uh, we're going to start again with a a shade colour of US Field Drab from Model Colour and you notice I start painting the smaller areas before I start painting the larger areas It's uh, you, you give yourself more room for manoeuvre and for um, fixing mistakes if you paint in the smaller areas and then paint up to them on the larger areas and then I'll just start filling in these larger areas and it's definitely going to take a couple of coats here folks so please be patient with what you're doing I want to leave some of that um, dark uh, base, uh, undercoat colour um, around the smaller features and then I'll be moving on to model colour German Camel Beige World War 2 this is going to be the main colour picking out the smaller areas first leaving some of the uh, US Field Drab for shade and then filling in the tanks once again it's going to take a couple of coats here folks so you've got to be patient and when I'm doing this I want to try and once again create a, a tubular look so you'll see me making small strokes with a brush and then I will determine which areas I want to fill in and which little lines that I've created I want to leave You see it's starting to get nice and bright now but not neon bright and there you go I'm just going back over it filling it in making sure there's not too much shade left by getting a nice solid second coat of paint on and making sure I'm only leaving those lines that I want uh, to be there for the highlight which is model colour deck tan quite a bright highlight doesn't take too much to really catch all those features, get them popping. And I'll place that highlight beside any little shade lines that I've left once again to help build up that tubular uh, tank like look that we're after. Then I'm just doing the, uh, the goggles here, nice simple process, just starting with dark grey, I'll give them a highlight of London grey, the strap on the helmet I've painted pretty much the same way as on the, um, uh, the rest of the figure, some spots of London grey 
as well for buttons and buckles. That'll help them stand out. I've usually I'll give them an undercoat of black. And the last one far up there. Some kind of off-white colour is ideal. Even deck tan can be used. It's a nice eye-catching detail that's worth painting. And then I'm going for um, a shade colour of purple for the skin. You'll see me using purple um, to one degree or more when I'm painting skin. It gives a nice bit of depth. Here I've used it as a base colour, but you can paint it into shade. Uh, over the um, the finished skin, and you know you'll see me exploring those approaches over uh, other videos. And then the base color for the skin, if I can just get it in shot, is a uh, model color German Camel Pale Brown. It's a nice skin skin color paint that's. Uh, good as a shade, um, a shade base. And in fact, sorry folks, in this case, excuse me, I think I've just gone straight to game colour bronze flesh tone. Um, as opposed to starting with the, the, the pale brown, you see that in other videos, my apologies. And that's right, because they're never onto the highlight, which is just flat flesh, game colour, flat flesh. And when you paint faces, you know what the, a face looks like, folks. Just always try and follow the, that shape. And um, that's a bit of ultramarine, model colour ultramarine, with a highlight of model colour azure, just to um, get a bit of glass-like appearance to the, the goggles. Now, there is one side of the flamer completed, of the flame rather, completed, just to give you an idea of where I'm heading. So I'm going to be starting with light yellow, moving on to, that's moro colour light yellow, moving on to game colour orange fire, and then game colour scarlet. I've got these bottles sitting upside down in the rack, that's why you've got yellow going on over that black brown colour um, you know going on very well normally yellow is a complete pain so I'll leave it sitting upside down and it comes out great I'll still be thinking about two coats so folks you really need to for large areas small details you can get away with one coat but a large area you, you have to think about two coats and I'm not too worried about leaving a little bit of dark shade in there as well Now I've slowed the, the speed of the video down here just so you can see the flamer in real time because there's a, a few things going on here folks. So here's the orange fire, game colour orange fire. So the yellow's had another coat and it's dried and the orange fire's going on on top of the dry paint. Once again kept upside down because as you probably know, orange can be a bit difficult to paint with. One of those fun pigments. So you can see these colours are actually quite close to each other just now. There's not a lot of difference, which is what we want. What a nice transition. So next I need to think about a bit of red. You can see the reddish tinge to the top of the flame on the other side. And for this I'm using hot orange from Gain Colour. Hot orange. It's more of an accent than the main colour. Because we want yellow and orange to be the, the main the main colours of the flame. So I'm going back for some more orange fire. I 
and just wet blending that a little bit and blending into the dry yellow too. So we're taking those definitive layers of colour and softening them up but keeping them visible. Now wet blending with the light yellow into the orange fire. And I'm trying to kind of make define waves flowing through if you see what I mean. You see how I've got some of the yellow going top, bottom to top. So that's like a wave, a sort of burst um, of flame coming through. And you can see it's a much softer, but still quite hot and fiery looking um, flame. Little bits of white hot um, uh, flicks in the flame, that's what we're doing just now. This will help catch the eye and give it a bit of shape as well as add to that feeling of heat. But you don't want to overdo it. These are just little accents. This is very much a case of less is more. So I should really stop now. Whew, I stopped. So I'm getting a bit more of the yellow. And I just want to paint dry, not um I blend but just try and paint dry to make it a bit more dominant in certain areas. And then I'm going for some black. I want to get a few um, sort of whiffs of smoke coming off this. like black oily smoke off the burning um, petroleum mix. Once again, less is more. I recommend you do a bit, stop, have a look and do another bit. Flames are quite difficult to paint and it's hard to know where to start. This is the first flame floor I've ever painted folks um, so I'm quite pleased how it's turned out and hopefully you guys can take the same approach and be happy with how it looks too. You can see how one side's got a bit more white than others or the white spots are larger than others and the smaller spots look better. And then I felt at this point that it was a little bit looking a little bit too much like a tiger fur. <laughs> so I thought it needs um, some red so I just got some flat red, put it in some of the recessed areas and some of the, beside some of this, the licks of smoke and such like, just to give it a bit of a richer um, reddish look in some areas, but just little touches. And also just to maybe tone down the oranginess just a bit. But once again it's about adding a bit and if you need to add a bit more. The yellows and oranges are the main colours here. Here I'm actually removing some of the the black where there's too much black, just painting over it a bit. I 
and we're nearly there. So there you go, that looks hot and fiery, I think. Oh, and then the boots. Now the boots undercoated black and then I've just given them a coat of uh, let me see now I've gone to German grey for that just given a highlight rather of German grey it's a very light highlight and then I'm using some pigments this is my pigment palette which has always got some uh, pigment line on it and I'm just taking a very very small amount and painting it over the lower area of the boots just to give them a mucky look. You don't want them to look completely caked with pigment, it's just to give them a nice mucky look so that they sit nicely on the base and I'll be using pigments on the base so they'll, they'll look um, quite uh, in the right uh, setting with a bit of pigment on the boots.